Hi, my name is Dr. Vera Tarman, and I am an addictions physician working out of Toronto, Welcome. Canada. Welcome. Did you know that GLP-1, a group of medications including the well-known Ozempic, were originally discovered in the venom of the Gila monster, a lizard native to the United States? Quite the surprising origin, isn't it? Our journey begins in the sun-baked deserts of the American Southwest, home to the Gila lizard. It's in its venom that scientists first discovered a compound that would eventually lead to the development of GLP-1 medications. Among these, Ozempic has emerged as one of the most recognized names. These medications have been hailed for their potential in treating conditions like diabetes and obesity. But their journey from venomous lizards to your local pharmacy is a unique story filled with twists and turns, successes and setbacks. And the journey of GLP-1S has only just begun. The world of GLP-1 medications, such as Ozempic, is already considered to be the gold standard of treatment for obesity and diabetes. Not even 20 years after their inception, they are surpassing other interventions, such as surgery and lifestyle interventions, as the best first choice options. So let's learn about these medications, how they work, their successes, how they compare to other medications, and also their side effects. And most important to those of us in the low carb and processed food addiction world, do they address the elephant in the room? The power of sugar and processed food addiction, which is a major cause of obesity and diabetes, could be neglected in the excitement. If this happens, the story of Ozempic might not have such a happy ending. What is Ozempic? How does it compare to other treatments for diabetes and obesity? Let's dive deeper. Ozempic is a GLP-1 medication known for its effectiveness in weight loss and sugar control. GLP-1 medications mimic the function of the hormone glucagon-like peptide, which affects how your body releases insulin. This natural satiety hormone also slows gastric emptying, thereby delaying the release of glucose into the bloodstream. These changes result in improved glucose control, as well as suppressing appetite, which means overall food intake is less. Through these mechanisms, diabetes can be slowed down or even stopped in its tracks, and profound weight loss can occur. Indeed, weight loss can range anywhere from 5% to 20% of one's initial body weight. This has got the bariatric community very excited. But how does it measure up against other treatments? Medications such as Vivance, Contrave and Naltrexone each have unique benefits. Vivance is a stimulant and is recognized for reducing hunger and food cravings, whereas Contrave combines two drugs effects, Wellbutrin and Naltrexone, for appetite control. Naltrexone, usually used with other medications, aids in reducing cravings for savory foods as well as alcohol and opioid medications. All these medications allow a person to lose 5 to 10% of their initial body weight. In the realm of surgical solutions, several types of bariatric procedures exist, from gastric bypass to sleeve gastrectomy. Gastric bypass, for instance, reroutes the digestive tract, and it boasts a success rate of 40 to 50% in achieving significant weight loss. Sleeve gastrectomy, another bariatric surgery, which removes about 80% of the stomach. It also boasts a high success rate, with up to 50% excess weight loss in the first year. In comparison, how does Ozempic perform? Well, a person can lose up to 10 to 20% of their body weight with the GLP-1 medications, outperforming the other medications, and without the drastic side effects of surgery. Remember, these can be adhesions, scarring, and dumping syndrome. Ozempic-type drugs, which promise to offer 20%, even 30% weight loss in the near future, are edging up to the weight loss success rates of bariatric surgery. However, Ozempic and the other GLP medications have their share of side effects, which we will explore further in the next segment. When weighing the pros and cons, each treatment has unique advantages and drawbacks. Surgical procedures, although effective, are invasive and carry their own risks. Ozempic, despite its effectiveness, isn't a cure-all. It can help in the short term, but it doesn't address the root problem, namely food addiction and other lifestyle factors like a person's stress level and quality of sleep. While Ozempic might be a great short-term solution, in the long run, if other factors are not addressed, diabetes and obesity can return with a vengeance. These medications are not a silver bullet, and they do have side effects. 
let's not forget this. Delving into the side of a Zempic, here is the information not often discussed. One of the more concerning side effects is muscle loss, called sarcopenia. While the medication can indeed help in reducing body fat, it doesn't discriminate between fat and muscle. Therefore, users may find themselves losing muscle mass alongside the desired fat loss, which can lead to weakness, fatigue, and a decrease in overall strength. This is especially problematic for people who are middle-aged or older, and this is often when we see diabetes and obesity becoming a problem. Weight loss can include 60% fat loss, but a whopping 40% loss of lean muscle mass. Wonder why you might be still struggling at the gym? Another significant concern is the certainty for weight regain once the medication is stopped. Ozempic works effectively while in the system, but its impact is not permanent. Once the medication is discontinued, there's a high probability that the weight will creep back on. This is particularly troubling given the exorbitant cost of these drugs. Not everyone can afford to maintain such an expensive medication regimen over time, especially once insurance coverage is exhausted. The cost, however, pales in comparison to the potential long-term risks associated with Ozempic. While the research is still ongoing, there are indications that prolonged use of GLP-1 medications, like Ozempic, could possibly increase the risk of pancreatitis, gastroparesis, which can lead to intestinal obstruction, and even certain types of cancer. And what about tolerance over the long term? How long do these medications work before the dose needs to be increased? making side effects even more likely. Other side effects may include nausea, abdominal pain, decreased appetite, and vomiting. While these are common and often temporary, they can be permanent for some individuals. These concerns add to the list of considerations that one must be mindful of when deciding whether Ozempic is the right choice. To sum it all up, while Ozempic does offer a promising solution to weight loss and diabetic control, especially in the short term, it's not without its drawbacks. The choice to use it must be taken within the context of the safer and cheaper alternative, ironically, the one that is not usually recommended. How about a low-carb or unprocessed food plan that removes the refined carbohydrates that trigger overeating and typically result in diabetes and obesity? Furthermore, why not address the addictive dynamic that drives a person to eat these toxic foods in the first place, or, at the very least, at the same time? So, what is processed food addiction? Is it the elephant in the room when it comes to diabetes and obesity? Food addiction is a concept that's been gaining traction in recent years. It's the idea that certain foods, particularly those high in sugar and fat, can trigger the same reward and pleasure centers in the brain as addictive substances like drugs and alcohol. This can lead to patterns of compulsive eating, overeating, and ultimately, weight gain and health problems. So, how does this relate to medications like Ozempic and other GLP-1 medications? Well, these drugs can certainly help with weight loss in the short term. They work by slowing down digestion and making you feel fuller for longer. But here's the catch. They don't address the underlying issue of food addiction. Imagine trying to put out a forest fire with a garden hose. Sure, you might dampen a few flames, but unless you remove the source of the fire, it will continue to burn. In the same way, medications can help to control weight and blood sugar levels. But if the root cause, food addiction which is driving the overeating, is not addressed, the weight is likely to come back once the medication is stopped. Now let's talk about processed food addiction directly. Eating toxic foods that cause illness is not due to poor willpower. It is due to the hijacking of our better judgment by processed foods. This is a biological consequence of eating highly palatable foods. Once this is acknowledged, the treatment is clear-cut. Programs designed to tackle food addiction focus on changing food choices, let's get rid of junk food, which is essential, and promoting a plentiful, nutritious diet of vegetables, protein, and fat. When combined with regular exercise and a supportive environment, these programs can lead to significant and sustained weight loss, even without medication. Yes, you heard me. Weight loss at the level of 50 or 60 percent, which, as you may remember, is the same rate as bariatric surgery, but without the complications and cost. Moreover, addressing food addiction doesn't just help with weight control. It can also improve overall health, reduce the risk of chronic diseases, and enhance quality of life. 
and unlike medications, these benefits come with a minimal price tag and without the risk of side effects. So, while medications like Ozempic can be a useful tool in the battle against obesity and diabetes, especially in the short term, they are not a silver bullet. They are not the final solution. Addressing food addiction could be the key to long-lasting weight control and overall health. So, is Ozempic the silver bullet to finally addressing and ending the diabetic and obesity crises? Or is it just a temporary solution? We've explored Ozempic, a renowned GLP-1 medication, and its pros, cons, and costs. And yes, its initial results show effectiveness. It may provide a quick start, giving an incentive to the patient struggling with obesity-related illnesses. But there are side effects, and this medication is only helpful as long as the person takes the drug. Weight loss will likely be fleeting once the injection is stopped. Then, if the person has not changed their food choices, the problems will return with a vengeance. But let's step back. If we as a society do not challenge the processed food industry, which frankly limits our choices of nourishment by making healthy foods expensive, inconvenient, and seemingly not as palatable, and offers instead foods that make us sick and make us overeat, we are no further ahead. Sadly, many of us are addicted to ultra-processed foods. We can't stop even when we try. Sometimes we don't even know we are addicted, blaming ourselves for our poor willpower. Check out the growing list of resources for those who are trying to bring the dangers of sugar, refined carbohydrates, and processed food addictions to light. Read Food Junkies, Recovery from Food Addiction. I invite you to join the I'm Sweet Enough, Sugar Free for Life Facebook group for free help amongst like-minded people. Ultimately, the choice is yours. But remember, understanding and addressing the root cause of your health issues will always be the most effective approach. The choice is yours. And take heart. Freedom from overeating these foods truly tastes great. And together with us, you can do it. The power is ours.